everybody. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you tuning in. If uh, you're not a member of the Taste of the Heat YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. I really appreciate it. I am doing this entire interview for Chili Magazine. Head on over to chilimagazine.net for everything spicy in your life. It's a great magazine that has all kinds of wonderful articles. You need to check it out. That's chilimagazine.net. So I want to uh, bring in my first guest for this evening. Uh, Thomas is uh, a good friend of mine. I say he's probably one of my best friends out there in the spicy world uh, and beyond. We become friends beyond that. He also is my uh partner and co-host in the Electric Chili Land, and uh, we need to get that back going, uh, this uh, virus, and then being uh, had the flu there, and everything that's going on with the holidays, we're way past that, but then this coronavirus hit, so uh, oh, it no doubt like about it. everything's kind of messed us up a little bit, but we're going to get back to that, so I want to bring in Thomas Toth from Voodoo Chili, and uh, the reason why I'm calling it Voodoo Chili right now, because I want to make sure we got the name correct because it used to be called Voodoo Chili, right? Uh, it's and it still is. Yep. Oh, it still it, is. Okay, absolutely. And actually, I call it Voodoo Chili now. Too ninety nine times out of a hundred, when it first got started, it was Voodoo Child. You know the old Jimi Hendrix song off uh, my favorite song ever, uh, Voodoo Child, Slight Return off Electric Ladyland. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And it just got so confusing having to re-explain it all the time. It's just like Buddha chili. And what's nice is when I get approached at the booth or uh, people know who we are and it's like, it's Voodoo Child, right? I'm like, you're a musician or a music lover? It's like, oh, yeah, Jimi Hendrix. I'm like, thank you, dude. You get it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, man. It's, so, so how did you get started in the uh, spicy food industry? Uh, quite by accident. Uh, you know, I've been, I was, you know, really caught up in the big marinade, uh, uh, thing back in the eighties and nineties. And of course that really morphed when they started, uh, demonizing salt and everything. But fast forward a bunch of years, uh, the, the transient nature of a lot of these small companies that just, uh, the number of them that have come and gone over the years, uh, there was a, uh, tropical type, uh, uh hot sauce that a neighbor of mine, uh, at the time was a chef. We'd come across, fell in love with it, up and disappeared, and uh, basically went out of business. And he was like, "Dude, that shrimp marinade that you make with the, you know, the the, the pineapple and the and the guava and all that goes, dude, thicken that up, put some habanero in there. I'll bet you'd be even better." One thing led to another. We gave it a try, fell in love with it. So it was my my first sauce per se. It was probably back in nineteen ninety nine. What what and sauce then, was that? Uh, that morphed into uh, psychotropic. Oh, well, that's one of my favorites. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank oh you. Oh, yeah, my that's, God, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting that one back in inventory. We've been uh, sold out of that now for a number of months, and uh, this coronavirus and some other issues are kind of like pushing that back. Uh, it's yeah. really making just making for a slow start uh, uh, for for a lot of us this year in, the, in this business, especially a lot of us that, uh, you know, go on the road and use our uh, guerrilla marketing uh, tactic yeah. at the, the beer festivals and all. Of course, those are all getting it definitely postponed. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to getting that one back. And to get back to your actual question, how did I get started as a business? Uh, somebody gave me this thing called bacon hot sauce. It was uh, very much of a novelty product at the time. And it's like, God, there's got to be something better out there. So as I'm, as I'm surfing the internet, going to these different forums, uh, you know, some of the names that you and I've met, just some of the really big, big names in the small batch gourmet sauce business. Uh, they were like, yeah, we've all tried it. It's just not possible. And it wasn't like challenge accepted or anything. It was just pure curiosity. It's like, why? Uh, you know, I mean, we've all done bacon soups and stuff like that. It tastes just fine. Well, it's a year and a half of one failed experiment after another, after another, after another. That's where Porcus and Farinum came from. And that just, it morphed into a business just because of uh, how well it was received. Once I found something that, you know, me and my, my sons were like, wow, finally, that really tastes cool. Got it out there. It was a great reception. And uh, a gentleman by the name of Chuck Evans uh, from Montezuma Brand. And he's, he's truly, I, I kind of look at him as really being the, the lead character or the original godfather of uh, the gourmet hot sauce business here in the United States. I mean, he even predates K. John, who he really kind of is the one that holds the title uh, in a lot of people's hearts and minds. But yeah, Chuck was uh, out there first with Montezuma brand, and he pulled me aside 
uh, right about the time I was looking at starting this as a company and just said, dude, you've got something that none of us have. And that's something that belongs in every grocery store in America. And here we are some, that was seven years ago last month. Uh, haven't got to that point yet, but we're still trying hard to work towards it. So we'll see what happens. Boy, a long, uh, that was a, a long answer to a short question. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I've known you probably five or six years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think uh, the, 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 the Tropic, um, tro what's, what's the name of it? Tropic Thunder? Psy Psy Psychotropic. Psychotropic, yeah. It's I, another, I, another plan where it's like voodoo child, voodoo chili, psychotropic drug, drugs, psychotropic hot sauce. Ah, okay. Yeah. Ch changing your perceptions. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> well, the, the, uh, you sent me the, the psychotropic. That was one of the first sauces you gave me. And uh -huh. like, I remember that. It blew me away. And oh, uh, um, I'm very honest about what I what I do when I review things and that. Um, I, I'm very easily pleased. I can tell you, you know that. I mean, oh, there's sure. so many great sauces out there, and oh, everybody seems to be stepping up their game big time. But uh, there's only been a few that I, I really haven't cared for that's out there, right. and, and and that and I think that's just basically, uh, it you know, uh, a, a personal flavor profile taste that I don't like. Like I'm not a real big uh, um, fermented flavor of hot sauces. Uh, yeah, same here. Same here. I love fermented, some peppers fermented, right. fermented, fermented sauces, the whole, the onions and garlics and everything. It's just, whoa, that's just too much for my palate. Yeah. Yeah. For, that's, yeah. that's exactly right. It's well, not you know, I've, you know, I've met people uh, that their, their, their palate just reacts viciously to any hint of cilantro. Oh, I didn't but, know that. Oh my God. Yeah. It's uh, so I think it's like a single digit uh, percentage of the population their palate reacts in the same way ours would. Uh, we're similar generations. Did you ever get your mouth, mouth washed out with soap for cussing as a little kid? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I, same here. Well, uh, I mean, never. I mean, never. Oh, of course not. <laughs> but there's a certain, a really small percentage of the population, that's their reaction to cilantro. Oh. It hits their palate in the same way that soap, uh, hand soap, uh, reacts uh, to a normal person's palate. So... Doesn't mean cilantro sauces suck, but to them, oh yes, they do. The palate's like a new, 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 new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's that's the point I mean. It's just it's not that I think someone's sauce is bad. It's just not one that I like, and I, and I feel bad saying. So I always put a disclaimer in there, you know, saying, "Hey, I'm not a fan of this kind of sauce. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's bad," you know. Right. But uh, then you started sending me a bunch of your other stuff, and that's when I fell in love with the Voodoo brand even more and more. And then, and then uh, we started hanging out, going to shows together. I've actually worked for you several times in different shows, oh, and, and a blast, we, a blast was had by all of those. It, absolutely, it was one of the best uh, best times I've had working in a booth. And uh, well, thank you. Uh, we You're a fun guy to get or be around, and, and that's why I wanted to do this interview with everybody. So. After you started getting the sauces, now I'm seeing you break into. Now I know you had Thai dry out there. Yep. Now you're starting to break into some more spices or uh, a powdered uh, 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 flavored uh, adventure. Like uh, what? What? What brought you to that? Uh, I mean, it's always been there in the back of my mind. Uh, you know, when I got the the, the first uh, Al Goldenberg Buddha, who yeah, uh, he lives probably not more than a few hundred yards away from me now since we moved here a nice. year ago. Actually, we moved in a year ago yesterday, by the way. Uh, but nonetheless, he drug me up to Cajun's place for, uh, there was a big festival they did every year in, uh, during the winter time up in Columbus, Ohio. And when Rose and I went to go check that out, we're up there just as guests, didn't have a booth or anything. But I went around, you know, I got to meet uh, Johnny McLaughlin, uh, George Shettish, uh, uh, you know, from uh, Cowboy George. Uh, you know, Steve Seabury and uh, Kat and uh, uh, Jeremy, you know, all these people, you know, big fans. And I'm tasting all this stuff. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. It's like, yeah, I, I still think I make some good stuff. But, you know, I really thought I was the top of the food chain. And, man, that that put me in my place big time. It's like, wow, there's a lot of people that do some great stuff. And it just come up with the – was working on Tide Dry at that point, released it. So it had always been a plan to, uh, to build on that. But after Tide Dry, I just – everything that I mixed up at home was either – I didn't think it was exciting enough. It wasn't unique enough. It just, it didn't, didn't catch. And then uh, 
God, a couple months before you and I worked together there at uh, Steve's first Chicago uh, yeah. expo. Uh, yeah, you got you got some prototypes of a couple things I was working on then, yeah. and just something kind of just kind of clicked inside uh, where the dry thing and the ingredients and in actually being able to deliver something that wasn't a me too uh, type product uh, just hit a really cool stride. Came up with about five or six recipes that uh, I was personally thrilled with, and. I think we got about what four in addition to it now that uh, looks like they'll be sticking around. You know the the Costa crab, uh, that one's doing okay. I think that's more of a seasonal product. We'll I'll see this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Texas sand, we're definitely moving from the little shorties to full size. Uh, Rome is burning. I instantly went full size just because I knew there was nothing like that out there, and the feedback on that just day one was fantastic. Speaking of which, uh oh, there we go. Speaking of which, I've got Rome is burning right here. Yeah, buddy. and amazing stuff. I'm, so I've, uh, I've mixed it in with uh, um, uh, ranch dressing and put it on a oh, salad. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There oh, you go, man. Uh, yeah. Spaghetti, you name it. I mean, it, it's it's a Italian style flavor, and it's got some serious heat. So, uh, oh yeah, uh, everybody needs to check this out for sure. Um, do you mind if I talk about this? No, 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 no. Oh, you want to talk about my pee-pee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, now you know why Thomas and I get along. So <laughs> yeah. he told me the other day, I'm going to send you my pee-pee. And I'm going, oh, my God, what am I in for? <laughs> this, <laughs> this is his new – where am I at? This is his new brand. Uh, and all he has on it is pee-pee. And let me give you a quick little rundown of the flavor profile I'm getting of this. Um, it's smoky. There is a tomato flavor to it and there is a bacon flavor to it. And I am loving this. Uh, Thai dry is my favorite powder out there, period. Thank you. Thank you. It and there's a nice following. And this here, man, this is going to give it a run for the money. I am, awesome. I am telling you the truth. This is gonna give it a run for the money. This this might be battling for first place. This is amazing. Well, thank you very very much. Yeah, we've uh, been now for people sitting there still a little bit lost here about the PP thing. It's uh, just the abbreviation for powdered porcus. There you go. Yeah. So that's the the smokiness, the the kind of little pork flavors that you get on the whole line of the porcus uh, brand products. And uh, yeah, getting that whole. Mm, a bacony thing uh, from liquid form, which you know said earlier took God year and a half plus uh, to come across something that I that I was tickled with and really exaggerated it on the Porcus original, but used to be Porcus and Farinum. Uh, really tamed a, a lot of that over the top back with the taco mm -hmm. and the X, etc. But anyhow, yeah, I'm really uh, yeah the feedback that I've gotten so far has been great. You and I knowing how much we enjoy the same kind of things. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely tickled to see that you're digging it so much, man. Oh, absolutely. Now, this is not under the Voodoo Chili line, right? Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and co-brand that one, both as the, the Voodoo Chili Spice Works and as a Porcus brand product. I'm, I'm still working on the label, uh, which time's so, getting real short on that. But Will it be Spice Works? Yeah, I think the the yeah the lead logo on there will be the Spice Works, and then there'll definitely be a mention of the the Porcus brand somewhere on the front. Okay, uh, is, the, is the, the Spice Works is definitely. Let me find the camera. Oh, there we go. <laughs> shoot you a logo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to put put that up afterwards. Um, that's the Spike Spice Works brand. I, I'm noticing that it's starting to come on as like an entity of itself. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure exactly how you're going with that. And and uh, if anybody's out there listening, um, get these spices. I'm telling you, you and I see you have a like a sampler package out there mm -hmm. and uh, give that ad address where they can get that. Oh, uh, the easiest way to do it is just uh, and you can put it up on the screen if you had it. Uh, sure. www, which do we even include that anymore? I, I guess I that's, that's old farts too, but yeah, yeah it's uh, <laughs> Uh, PowderedHotSauce.com. 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 <laughs> Where did that come from? What? Uh, we used to do that. Oh, God. They, uh, 
It was on was TV it, all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember which commercial. I think it was Expedia, maybe. Expedia, I think. Was that Expedia? No. I no, don't know. Yeah, but at the end of it, dot com. Yeah. Yeah. If it, when you guys watching this, put it in the comments below. Where did the, where did that come from? That whenever you used to see the at the end of the TV commercial was dot com. Yeah, and, exactly. And and I know we make we we have fun with that, but I can't remember where it came from. So, so the first the first person to leave a comment uh, once this video gets published. Sorry, but you know, first is first. Uh, yep. First one to leave a comment. Uh, I'll leave a reply. Uh, uh, we'll exchange emails, and uh, got a pretty cool uh, uh, surprise for you. Oh, that's awesome! I huh? did not. I, I didn't ask for that. I didn't no, I expect know. that. I appreciate that. That that's that's awesome. Thank you. Because that that's how much that's how much I want to know. Because I'm pretty sure it's not Expedia, but it might be. Who does? And now the powdered hot sauce. Did you ever watch uh, Ren and Stimpy? Oh my God! Yes. Do you remember Powdered Toast Man? Yes. 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 I've been I've been trying to uh, Elva or nudge a artist buddy of mine to do a decent likeness of the powdered toast man character so I could do the powdered sauce man thing for some advertising, but that has that hasn't happened yet. So well, I think you should go with the the Heisenberg look too. <laughs> there we go. Actually, there uh, I've got I've got things lined up for a line of uh, I've got to call them gourmet novelty sauces. Nice. Yeah, that basically it'll just be a short line. It'll just be for grins and giggles. Uh, hopefully, a couple of my distributors will jump on it, and hopefully, people will enjoy it. But yeah, it's going to be uh, uh, it, it, Heisenberg's a big part of it, and I've got uh, awesome. art, artists that did a really good caricature of because I guess when I'm wearing my bigger outdoor uh, glasses, uh, there's I keep getting told uh, a likeness to one Walter White of fictional. TV no, no, there's no likeness to. I think you're twins, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, my skin's not wrinkly enough. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, take your uh, glasses off. Everybody's beautiful. <laughs> there we go. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> See, there we go. <laughs> now, you know, I skipped right over this, but we were talking about your hot sauces. How many hot sauces do you have now? I have no clue. Uh, I'd actually have to go back and look. What, what, what uh, actually actively. Uh, in inventory and getting remade each time we uh, get low in inventory. The the main Porkus brand lineups, the uh, Porkus Original, it used to be called Porkus and Farinum. Got the Bacon Taco, uh, Bacon X, kind of like a mole sauce. I got to love that one. Love uh, it. Freak Show is definitely going to be sticking around for a good long while. Awesome. Uh, although, boy, that one's expensive as hell for us to make. Um, and then sometime this year, I was really hoping uh, here by the beginning of the second quarter, uh, to have Psychotropic back again, but nice. it will be coming back. Uh, Flying Dog, we're going to be uh, uh, reopening uh, discussions here as this coronavirus thing starts uh, chilling out. Uh, Soon we're going to be doing uh, working forward. We kind of like pulled back a little bit for the winter time. Uh, had good inventory there, but I expect Bloodline uh, to definitely stay on board with them. Nice. Uh, Dag on that first one we did, uh, the Mango Habanero IPA uh, yep. Fever Dream. Yep. Oh. Uh, our very first official collaboration partnership with Flying Dog, that was our lead product. And they were just releasing that as their newest all, you know, year round beer. Right. And man, there was some issues with distribution. You know, there was, there was bars pulling uh, a bloodline off tap, replacing it with Fever Dream going, hey, this is their new, you know, fruity type beer. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Bloodline's like one of their flagship products. So right. they pulled it from that uh, full time to seasonal. And the distribution numbers weren't quite there. So to try and build some demand, it's now been pulled back to brew house rarity status. Oh. So the beer gets brewed as the spirit leads. So they'll go, I mean, I think at one point they went a year and a half, two years of that brewing it. And I get why from a business standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, but man, yeah. So that one will come and go. And then uh, Pearl Necklace. Yes, uh, thank you. I was hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> yep, yep. That one's been sold out for a little while now. And we have a second product based on uh, the Pearl Necklace Chesapeake Stout uh, that we're working on that I'm really, uh, in fact, I'm waiting to hear from them right now because uh, we'd like to have that out there by uh, late spring. But yeah, with all the craziness going yeah. on with this event yeah. in the world, yeah, who knows? Pearl who knows? Necklace, that, that one is right up there with me with the uh, uh, Psychotropic. Wow. It's, a, okay. it's very mellow, very rounded sauce. It's actually smooth. 
Thank you. It, yeah. it has a smooth texture to it, and it, it's a, a great bacony flavor, and it has just a, a slight hot flavor at the end. It, it, it's really you you wouldn't know it unless you were looking for it. The flavor there, the the hoppiness at the end, but uh, the flavor is that's that's just such a great all around sauce. Amazing, oh, amazing flavor. Yeah, I wait, well, I I think I uh, bought a a case of it when you and I were in New York together because mm -hmm. it was that good. Oh, yeah. It, it didn't last long at all. It, it, just, no. it just goes on everything. And you know, it, it, uh, for some reason that, that particular weekend in Chicago, that was some of the most enthusiastic responses at the booth, at least, if, at least for ones that really stuck in my memory. Uh, you know, Sue Hard. Wow. She, yeah, her, her response to that was just, uh, uh, one of my biggest memories of the weekend. It was just so yeah, great. Just from overall, Chicago. the whole the whole the whole response uh, amongst the people attending the event uh, was 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 really solid. Because that was still a very relatively. I think we'd only had it out for about two months at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that I forgot. That's where I first uh, I got I got it from you. I was thinking New York, but it was even before that. It was in Chicago. I got that case. Yep. Oh, such amazing flavor, dude! You're a genius behind the sauce making out there, and if if, if, if you guys don't know who Thomas is and checked out his sauces, I'm telling you, you have to check them out. They're that world wow. renowned flavors, and and I I can't I can't uh, I, I can't tell you enough how great they are. It's it's nothing. They're none of them are. Uh, that uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the word where it's uh, the, the cliche sauces or the uh, um, I just want to make the hottest sauce there is, or uh, it's just going to fit a certain certain niche. All of your sauces have such a wide range of likability. I think that's what makes them so so good to me because uh, and and I said this before I even knew you as a friend. I, uh, okay. I so so it's not anything about uh, you know saying hey this is my buddy's sauces no they're that good and well, thank you very much I think you're a genius behind the ladle <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't I don't I don't connect with the genius part we've been very fortunate and uh, you know going back to the uh, uh, you know I got had the privilege of being uh, K John's guest up uh, like I said about seven years or so ago. You know, driving home from that that weekend, it uh, there was a number of hot sauces that I was making, you know, homemade sauces at the time. I was like, yeah, if I'm going to take this seriously as a business, I pushed a lot of sauces off to the side because there was already much, much better examples of that style of sauce out there. And uh, the commitment, once we decided to try and uh, run this as a business, uh, was to really try and stick to something that's, that's, that's different, uh, not just my version of this or my version of that. Uh, it's... Yeah, I'd much rather have fewer products that uh, really kind of stand on their own and make their own statement and just, wow, I, that is a profile I've not had before. So, right. You know, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but it's been, it's been fun. We've been very fortunate and uh, man, we are, we are blessed with such cool fans and customers out there. Their, their, their enthusiasm and support is just uh, man, second to none. I'm really, that, that, well, that's what keeps me going because this ain't an easy way to make money, man. No, the profit margin isn't real big on a bottle of hot sauce. Nah, it's yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, exactly. It's a low low price item. So when you're looking at distribution, uh, yeah, the margins are just like wow. Uh, I think the guys that own their own bottling facilities and uh, you know hire themselves out as co-packers to help other newcomers mm -hmm. or smaller companies, uh, I think they're in a great position. Uh, you know, but those of us that have to collaborate with uh, you know bottling partner, etc. Yeah, distribution numbers are thin. You know, wholesale's not bad. Retails, uh, you know, but it's still not. It's you know, it's a it's a numbers game. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, higher priced items. You know, you got you know, fifty dollar little electronic thing or something. Yeah, you get you know, thirty forty bucks an item. You know, here we're looking at a dollar, two dollars per item. So you need right. to a hell of a lot of them to keep things afloat. Right, yeah. right. Where do you where do you get you have your bottling at? Uh, my primary bottling partner is uh, down in uh, uh, San Augustine, Florida. Okay, Dorfman and who is that? Yep. In Dorfman in, Farms. In Dorfman Farms. Now, yep. they just got, if I'm not mistaken, a huge new facility, correct? Yes. Yes, yes. Actually, they're expanding on the existing one, so a much, much larger uh, bottling line. 
I, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, get, uh, Adam on from a uh, farms. He, uh, um, as soon as, God, he gets, yeah, as soon as he gets, um, his, uh, new, uh, factory up, we're going to do an interview with him. So oh, hopefully we can do a walk around the, uh, facility and show oh, it off a little cool. bit. Yep, yeah. That'd be super cool. And, and you have nothing but high praise about him. And um, every time I, I like somebody's sauce, like on Facebook or on yeah Facebook or Instagram, and he sees it, he's appreciates very appreciative of uh, yeah, any of the stuff that he, is made down there. He likes supporting everybody, so that's, oh, yeah. that's really cool. Very much so, very much so. I mean, he doesn't really take the torch and run, and uh, you know he's, he's very subtle, but yeah, he's a huge supporter, great guy, uh, and I give just. Not really giving them a plug, just really complimenting the reason I'm so committed to using them. Uh, integrity, uh, second to none. I mean, the horror stories I've heard in this business of somebody hires a co-packer, bottling partner, uh, whatever term you prefer. Uh, there's been a, a good number of stories out there where they'll keep changing the ingredients without letting the uh, us, the owners, know. Right. Replacing with something cheaper, something. So they're they're fattening their margin and yeah. just kind of tiptoeing. So it's not a drastic change, but you know, over the course of uh, uh, months or a couple of years, it's like, what the hell? This this is not the sauce we started making originally. I have heard that a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. not that's not an uncommon story. Uh, so Adam's reputation for you know his integrity. Uh, I'm, I'm six years in with him now. True story. Seven be seven years now. Yeah, two thousand fourteen. Yeah, so it's been six years. Uh, it'd be six years ago here in a week and a half. Uh, anyhow, so you got that. Uh, and quality, uh, his quality control is is fantastic. Every product, I mean, every batch tastes the same as the previous one. And so nice. yeah, speaking of consistency, uh, anybody that's been in the small batch food manufacturing of any sort knows consistency is a really, that's a tough one to hit. And Adam nails it. And he's nice. accidentally improved a couple of the recipes that I sent down uh, for him to to work on so we could duplicate it flavor wise, delivery wise, because, you know, I, I'm sourcing stuff locally. He's sourcing stuff in bulk. There's a couple of recipes. Booty time. Uh, he accidentally improved upon Porcus Infernum uh, actually is one that he accidentally improved upon. Uh, nice. Yeah, they, they they make their own ketchup uh, for the uh, restaurant industry and for other recipes uh, down there in Florida. Wow. And I was wanting to go, I think the original recipe that I d d designed up here in Northern Virginia, I want to say it's Heinz. It was one of the big name brand uh, ketchups. And uh, he snuck me a sample using their own homemade in-house ketchup. And, you know, Willie and I are sitting there sampling. I'm like, dude, what did you do to this? And he's like, oh, well, I use my ketchup. And I'm like, well, I told you not to. He goes, I know. That's why I sent you two different samples, one the way you wanted it and one just to see what you thought. And I'm like, yeah, let's. Uh, you you were right. Let's go with your idea. So <laughs> nice, nice. And that's what's fun. Working. And he gave you a choice too. That's what's nice about it. Yeah, he didn't push it in. Uh, he just like he he understood where I was coming from. Going, I don't want to mess with this. And I was working on a relatively short timeline at that point. Uh, you know, once again involving the uh, you know the first uh, uh, New York City Hot Sauce Expo. Nice. And uh, yeah, so I've been there year since year one. Didn't get uh, our name drawn in the lottery this year. Uh, although with it being postponed, I, I know I'm uh, somewhere there high up on the waiting list. So if it's a yeah. conflict schedule for uh, some other companies, then hopefully uh, still may be able to sneak in. If not, I'll, I'll try and work it out so I can at least make a cameo appearance, walk around, shake some hands and just say nice. hello. And, you know, we've, nice. yeah, you, and I've, you and I have developed a lot of uh, really fun and interesting friendships through uh, through these events, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, now speaking of that, um, I know a lot of your uh, weekend shows or uh, a lot of people hit farmer's markets and then different kind of beer events and, and stuff. Now, seeing that all of them are all canceled, where are you, where, where can people get your stuff and, and find something new from you? Uh, website. Uh, you know, like the, the, you know, the powdered hot sauce.com that I mentioned earlier, that mm -hmm. directly takes you to the, the, the Voodoo Chili Spice Works, uh, little subsection of the store. Uh, but you know, uh, www.porcus.rocks, R O C K S, uh, that's our main portal for the Porcus brand, the Voodoo Chili Sauces, and Voodoo Chili Spice Works. Nice, yep, yep, yep. Nice. And we, uh, uh, shipping here anywhere in the U.S. and uh, any FPO, APO addresses. Although, again, with this big event, 
it might be able to slow down there. Uh, we do ship internationally, but it's uh, it's not cheap, unfortunately. That's 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 something we have no control over. Yeah, yeah. The realities of overseas shipping is uh, it's a tough one. And then you got to deal with uh, uh, the uh, paperwork of being uh, uh, what's it called uh, contraband or uh, uh, they, yes, want, they want to know what, yeah. what everything is in there. Customs, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Oh and, yeah, print a shipping label for international. There's a, yeah, there's a hell of a lot more little line items for that. Oh one. Yeah. yes, there is. Well, Thomas, I uh, unless there's something else you'd like to bring to the uh, uh, the interview on uh, what you have going on or what's next. Um, is there anything uh, else you want to bring in? Uh, man, I think the, the biggest thing that came to my mind when you said, uh, hey, I'd like to interview you was uh, said, man, you need to sh make sure to, to sneak in a big thank you to, to all of our fans and supporters out there. And and thank you for uh, your friendship over the years. I mean, as you stated, uh, this all started off with uh, me digging what you were doing on YouTube. We had no idea who the other one was. And uh, yeah, thanks to some tasty treats. Uh, yeah, really cool friendships come out of this thing, man. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thank, you for that. thank you to everyone that's uh, been a big supporter of us, uh, big or small, and really looking forward to uh, getting back out on the road. We're going to be doing some more cherry picking instead of being every single weekend. But uh, yeah, man, and keep an eye out. We've got a couple of YouTube channels uh, and some other outlets uh, that I'm uh, working on the scripts on. And uh, nice. uh, I'll talk about them once they're actually uh, live and going. But yeah. Awesome. Thomas, I couldn't uh, be more thrilled to be talking with you. As always, it's, it's totally my pleasure. And I want people to check out your stuff. And uh, Thomas is, a, is, is an amazing person. And uh, I, I, what, I think one of the reasons why I, I, I love the guy so much is that he's honest. He, uh, he's gonna, um, he doesn't, he, he doesn't sugarcoat it. But he doesn't want to. But he doesn't want to hurt your feelings. But he's he's going to be honest with you, and I love that about it because you know walking away exactly what it is, and it's never criticism. It's always constructive criticism, and uh, that's uh, that's the way you make a friendship grow and become stronger. And I want to really thank you very much for everything that you've taught me along the way and all the help you've given me. So wow, wow, well, same same same, Kendall. It's uh, it's definitely been a very mutual beneficial. Uh, uh, friendship here as far as just uh, learning more about uh, who we want to keep folks and becoming as human beings. Yep, exactly. And and yeah. and in this time that we're going through right now with this coronavirus and everything, I think this has taught a lot of people to be a little bit more kinder, to step Hope back so. before you explode because someone cuts you off or or says something you know out of the ordinary because we're all going through something. And I think when we get through all this, we're going to have a better relationship with everybody out there. So I certainly hope so, man. Yeah. yeah. So. I want to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Please hit that subscribe button. It really would mean the world to me. And uh, until next time, this is Tasting the Heat Live, Meet the Maker with the wonderful Thomas Toth from Voodoo Chili and Spice Works. So we'll talk to you again. Thank you, everybody. Bye.